Yes. All right, uh, good afternoon. So, so I, a few years ago, I came up with the idea for a novel um, genetic weapon for use against cancer. Uh, I've spent the past few summers researching this treatment. So cancer is really a monumental problem around the globe. In the US alone, cancer kills one person every single minute. So cancer comes in all shapes and sizes. It can affect people of all ages and it can affect every organ in the body. And one of the reasons cancer remains such a big problem is because current treatments are insufficient in order to effectively treat it. So current treatments such as chemotherapy can be uh, compared to an atomic bomb. While they may kill the target, they also um, affect all the cells around it. So what we really need in cancer treatment is Robin Hood's arrow. We need a magic bullet that hits the bullseye every time. We need a cancer treatment that kills the cancer cells without causing side effects. The method by which I propose to accomplish this is called CRISPR-Cas. So CRISPR-Cas is a, an ancient um, bacterial defense mechanism against foreign DNA. So for example, a bacterial cell would use it and if it were to be invaded by a viral DNA that could potentially kill the cell. So uh, CRISPR-Cas operates on a very simple mechanism. It's made up of two main parts. So you can see in yellow the guide RNA. That works almost like a GPS system. It matches a sequence on the target DNA. The big blue blob is the Cas, and that acts like a pair of scissors. When the CRISPR-Cas is guided by the guide RNA to the target and wraps around it, the Cas snips the target and that makes it non-functional. So you may have heard about CRISPR-Cas in the media. It's really exploded in the scientific community over the past few years because it's been used to target, to edit DNA in everything from portobellum mushrooms in order to make them resistant to rot, to even in the human genome, in human embryos in order to cure um, inherited diseases. But the way I propose to use CRISPR-Cas in my cancer treatment is slightly unconventional. I want to target the cancer cell's RNA. So why target RNA? In context of a cancer treatment, targeting RNA is a lot safer than targeting DNA. DNA is the blueprint of the cell. It is the instructions that the cell uses in order to produce proteins throughout its lifetime. And then that blueprint is passed on to the cell's offspring. That means that if you were to accidentally target and edit the DNA of a normal cell that isn't cancerous, it could cause long-standing tissue harm. On the other hand, RNA is the message that is copied from that DNA. It is transient. It only lasts in the cell for a matter of hours or a day. And as a result, the damage done to, accidentally done to normal tissue won't be nearly as harmful. So I propose to target the cancer cells apoptosis cycle. So apoptosis is something you can think of like cell suicide. It's an extremely important uh, biological process that has happened in your cells since birth. So when you receive a paper cut, for example, the skin cells only heal. They only divide to fill the gap. They don't continue dividing because the extra tissue that would create would be called a tumor, cells dividing out of control. So this is because your body is regulating the cells' growth by causing them to commit apoptosis. So, cancer, uh, so in a normal cell, there is a healthy balance of anti-apoptotic and pro-apoptotic proteins. If the cell needs to grow, the anti-apoptotic uh, levels will increase. If the cell needs to die, then the anti-apoptotic levels will decrease. So the, the seesaw can sway, but it won't be out of balance. On the other hand, in a cancer cell, it is completely out of balance. The anti-apoptotic proteins strongly outweigh the pro-apoptotic proteins, and as a result, the cancer divides, the cancer cell divides out of control, with nothing to, nothing to cause it to kill itself. In order to fix this problem and kill the cancer cell, we need to tip the balance the other way. We need to decrease the cancer uh, cell's production of anti-apoptotic proteins, so that it is outweighed by the production of pro-apoptotic proteins, and the cell commits apoptosis and dies. So in order to introduce uh, the CRISPR-Cas 
into these cells to target their um, anti-apoptotic mRNA and cause them to stop producing the anti-apoptotic proteins, I designed a plasmid. So this plasmid targets the protein MCL1, which is an anti-apoptotic protein that a lot of human blood and breast cancers are very heavily reliant on. So you can see on the plasmid, um, there is the CAS, the scissors, there's the guide RNA that matches this MCL1, so that's the GPS system, and then there's GFP, uh, green fluorescent protein. So GFP is uh, a protein that's found in jellyfish. Under ultraviolet light, it glows bright green. And if you put the GFP into an animal cell or a human cell, it causes that cell to glow bright green. And because of its properties, GFP has been used for years by scientists as what they call a genetic tag. So when you put GFP alongside a DNA into a cell, it gives you a very easy way of knowing whether the, cell, the DNA has made it into the cell, because if it has, then the cell will glow green. So these are the breast cancer cells that I used. That, as I mentioned before, uh, this particular cell uh, was very heavily reliant on the MCL1 for its survival. So this is a picture of them under uh, visible light, but when we introduce the DNA, turn the lights off, and turn the UV light on, it looks like this. The cells glow green. And that means that the DNA made it into the cells. That means that there's an active CRISPR-Cas treatment in the cells targeting their RNA and hopefully causing them to commit apoptosis. And sure enough, when I did a counting experiment after they were given the treatment, you can see that the cells that received the CRISPR-Cas treatment, which are shown in red, began to die. They were compared to a control treatment, which was shown in blue, that did receive a plasmid, but that plasmid didn't contain the DNA coding for the CRISPR-Cas. So in or this experiment was done in living cells in the test tube. But to move this treatment one step closer to becoming a, hum a treatment that could be used in human cancer patients, the next step would be to do an in vivo experiment. So that means in a living organism. There are a lot of factors in an organism that play a big role in how effective a treatment is. And we also need to test whether the treatment has any harmful side effects. So to do this, I would induce a cancer induce a tumor in a mouse, and then introduce the, the CRISPR-Cas treatment using what a scientist would call a viral vector. And then at that point, I could see whether I could cure the cancer with the CRISPR-Cas. So I want you to imagine a world where patients no longer have to choose between suffering at the hands of something as uncontrollable and devastating as cancer, and suffering at the hands of a treatment that has harmful side effects. I want you to imagine a world where cancer patients receive personalized treatments that don't cause suffering. I want you to imagine a world where we can stop the clock on cancer deaths. Thank you.